thanks for joining us tonight. Um, tonight's about Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is about pie. At least it is in our house, right, girls? Yeah. Mm hmm. So we've got some butterscotch pie, and we've got some chocolate pie. We're saving the pumpkin pie for tomorrow for actual Thanksgiving. Um, if you're at home and you don't have any pie, always consider stopping by McDonald's and you can pick up uh, an apple pie. Did you want some? No. No? And I smell it, Daddy. Of course you can smell it. You can even eat it. It's delicious. I want some. So, <clears throat> thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you've got Not your pie. Oh. I'll eat it. We did want to have a chance to say thank you. Since this is a, a season of Thanksgiving to all of you too. Uh, we're so grateful at Benji for everyone that's joining us. It's been a crazy year. I don't think we ever would have imagined this year would be what it would be this year. Um, but y'all are still with us. Um, we're still coming together, uh, worshiping together as a community. We're still eating pie together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still having so much to be thankful for. So thank you for all the ways that you are doing ministry at your house. All the ways that you're still... Uh, coming together as a congregation that we're still binging together even if we're not in the building and uh, Thank you for all the ways that you've made a difference this year um, And so now we have the opportunity to gather in a special Thanksgiving worship to say thank you to God for all the blessings that we have So yeah, yeah lots of blessings, right? Yeah, so uh, Happy Thanksgiving everyone. Do you want to say happy Thanksgiving? Have a good Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. is filled with the glory of God, and we say thank you. The hills and valleys are filled with color, and we say thank you. Our tables are overflowing with food, and we say thank you. Our life is filled with love of family and friends, and we say thank you. Lord, as we consider all that you have done for us and for our world, we say thank you.
Our reading for today is a favorite one of mine, and it reminds me that amidst the worries of the world, I need these opportunities to pause and give thanks for the God who loves us all. So hear now these words from Jesus to you and me on this Thanksgiving Eve. I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than these? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. You know, it's easy to pick out Thanksgiving photos from this Gilbred family album. These photos are the ones where the dining room table is stretched out to its full capacity. There are burnt orange placemats and a bronze turkey in the center of the table, a candlelit dinner complete with mashed potatoes and stuffing and green bean casserole and cranberry sauce, and of course, apple pie, not that yucky pumpkin stuff, and smiles from everyone around the table. You also might notice in the background of those photos the glow of the muted big screen TV with football that is playing all day long. But one element that isn't easily caught in those pictures is our annual tradition of going around the table to say what we're thankful for. Maybe you do this too, but there is something to this act of speaking our individual words of gratitude in the presence of one another in my family that makes them so real. After everyone has shared their thanks, there's just this palpable sense of abundance that fills up the room. Even if the past year has been a tough one, everyone still finds something to share. And it seems that inevitably we all realize how blessed we truly have been in the highs and the lows of that year. And if nothing else, we're grateful for the gift that we have the ability to sit here at the table together at least for one more year. So how about you for this year? Do you feel grateful for something that's happened to you? Do you feel particularly grateful for 2020? Mm, maybe not. Does it seem that this year in particular, it's hard to come up with words of gratitude amidst the worries and concerns swirling around us? In the midst of the latest coronavirus surge and schools moving to distance learning and businesses and families struggling to make it, and maybe we aren't able to get together in the same way this year, it seems odd, doesn't it, to pause and give thanks. As I read Jesus' words from the Gospel of Matthew, I hear the tension there, and maybe you hear it too. He's speaking to people who are worried about a great many things. He's speaking to people who are chasing after all the things that are supposed to make life full, supposed to make life secure, supposed to make life happy and easy, but they're struggling because the worries are just starting to wear on them. And yet here is Jesus speaking of life and life abundant in the midst of the worries and about life being more than all these things. But these people are too worried to hear it because there doesn't seem to be enough. There doesn't seem to be enough money to go around. There doesn't seem to be enough time. And there doesn't seem to be even enough life to go around. You can almost see it, can't you? The cords of scarcity wrapping themselves around these worried people Jesus is talking to. And yet Jesus says to these people, look at the birds of the air and how your heavenly Father feeds them. Look at the lilies of the field and how your heavenly Father clothes them. And are you not of more value than these? 
It's as if to say in the midst of the troubles of the world, Jesus is calling us all to pause for a minute to look and recognize at the beauty of what God has done all over the place and for only a minute or two to speak God's words of abundance into being just by sharing in a moment of thanks. As we look around us and see the troubles of our world, as we look on the news and at all the terrible tragedies surrounding us, as we think of how hard this last year has been on most of us, it's tempting to think this year is a lost cause, and there isn't much for which to give thanks. But what if we each took a moment to pause and look at the world through the eyes of Jesus with his love and hope, even in this world? I have a favorite mentor and colleague who is wrestling with her own gratitude several Thanksgivings ago. She said that she found a bumper sticker that summed her feelings up in that sort of laugh until you cry school of humor. Life is hard, it said, and then you die. As she shared her bumper sticker with some friends, most of them laughed at this joke. But one kind and perceptive friend asked, Have you been having a hard week, dear? She responded she had had a hard year, and the world had too. Maybe not harder than any other year, but it was hard nonetheless. Recently, she had had four hard deaths in her congregation, four funerals in a row. And she had that sort of falling out with God, a dark day of the soul, as she described it. And in that moment, she asked God, what good are you anyway, God? And God's ironic response to her, well, was a fifth death and another funeral to attend to. This time, a young man whose wedding she had just officiated the month before and whose car was hit broadside by a train. She didn't have the heart to tell the young widow she was drained and not up for this and absolutely the worst possible preacher for the job. Instead, she just took a deep breath and she went over to be with this woman in her grief. As this pastor was preparing for her funeral, this preacher was worried her voice would crack, worried that she would not have the words to say, worried what the family might think as she botched this funeral completely. But she held on to three things that a friend of hers had taught her a funeral was for. You were there to give thanks for this man's life, he had said, to say goodbye and to give him over to God. We're here to give thanks for his life, she thought. How strange in this circumstance. This man is dead at 30 and we're here to give thanks for his life and not to argue that it should have been longer or easier or different in any number of ways. Just to give thanks for what there was of it, to be glad we knew him and to say a blessing over as much life as he had before commending him to God. So that is what we did, she said. And once we did everything changed, or at least it did for me, I have searched for adequate words to describe what changed and have failed, but it had something to do with trusting God to be God and to let God run the world, not me. I gave up my notions of the way life ought to be and recognized the obvious that sadly people do die sooner or later for all sorts of reasons, but they never die to the love of God and that in between the cracks of that great truth, there are a thousand reasons to say thank you to God and to one another for the gift of every moment of life and love in this world and in the next. Now this Thanksgiving, as we sit down at our own tables, I know it might be hard to find the right words to say about the year that we've had. 2020 has kind of sucked in many ways, hasn't it? But maybe it will help for us all to pause for that minute and speak a nourishing word of God's abundance into being. How has God cared for you even when you were at your worst? What are the many cracks through the worries in which God's love has broken through and has blessed us in a thousand ways? 
who knows, as we all share in our thanks together, maybe a, a palpable sense of abundance will fill the room. Maybe something will change for us. And we'll see the world through the same loving eyes of Jesus and be able to say together once more, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together. Today, God, we offer our thanksgiving and our praise to you. We raise our voices because you are the giver of all gifts. Everything that we have and all that we are come from you, and so we say thank you. For the tables that we share, for the bread that we break within our communities and within our families and within our homes, God, we give you thanks. For the hands of friendship that have been extended to us for the grace that we have received from you, for the embrace of love that you give us all, for the courage, courage to love even when it is hard. God, we give you thanks. For patience in the midst of difficult times, knowing that your presence is with us always, even then. For the blessings that are new to us every morning, for the ones that sustain us through the day, and for your blessings that follow us even into the darkest nights, God, we give you thanks. In all things, we 
sing your praises, and we join with all of creation's song, saying, thank you, God, for all the ways that you are with us, all the ways that you love us and bless us. Oh God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you richly give us all that we need, bread from earth and bread from heaven, the bread of life that gives life to the world, for everything that we are and all that we have for all the gifts that you give us that are more than we can count. God, we give you thanks, and we say, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Go in the blessing of God. Go to be a blessing to others. Go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 